Good evening, guys. This is another race pilot series we are recording here. On the other side of the screen tonight, our RC Electronic Head Chief of R&D and Owner, Mr. Andre from Slovenia. I'm very happy to have you uh, on, this, on this show. Thank you very much. And I think what it's going to be very exciting, uh, normally we only talk with you about technical parts of your um, RC stuff and so on. And tonight it's about yourself, which I think it's very, very interesting where you're coming from, your glider background, and, and I, I guess we will have a quite a uh, few interesting insights. Yeah, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Andre. So I think it's time to introduce yourself a little bit. How did you start it? Well, okay, I'm coming from uh, Slovenia. That's, I would say, quite small and nice country which you have to visit if you haven't yet. Uh, well, I started with flying motor sports when I was quite young, I would say 10, 11. Uh, my brother was already flying, then I started, then we both stopped uh, during the school time and so on. And then when I was a bit older, I started again uh, in my college. And I also start to get an interest of flying the full size stuff at the Did beginning. You do both at the same time, or basically, I start with model sport, majority flying the gliders, but I was really not good at it. <laughs> it okay. was just lunch and crash and lunch and crash. It was self taught everything. So basically, my lessons were quite short so I went out throw it two times break it and it was two days of preparing and then basically it started the interest of flying the paragliding okay uh, but that year two guys were near where I live died so I was beaten to do it by my mother <laughs> so I just went into the aero club and signed in for the glider pilot so I start that and I basically start to fly F3K motor planes okay uh, basically training to throw high which I was not able but my gliding skills were picking up so I was getting to know the thermos, how to do it, to trim the plane. Uh, then I start to fly F5J. Uh, this is when I also start doing the electronics for the category. F5J is altimeters. Yes. And my basic, my first uh, equipment which I developed as arts electronics was basically the altimeter to measure the altitude of F3K plane because I was interested how high I throw it, basically how low I throw it because it was quite low, 40 meters, now they throw it to 70 meters. Uh, and this is how everything started. Uh, and during that years, I was basically a pilot of a full-size glider. Uh, just doing some thermaling around the airfield and then start to going to the competitions. Then I got uh, my, uh, how do you say, scholarship from the company, Elix, uh, which is producing the full-size glider instruments. So basically I start working there all summer and also during the three days in college during the week. So I learned more and more and more stuff compete more and more with full size. And then the GPS triangle came somehow, somehow meet me, yeah, with, with Matej Rosman. So he was the guy who came and say, oh, look, this is what they are doing. And I'm also trying and two more Slovenian guys, but we need equipment. 
<laughs> it's it's not it's unreliable PDA, the pocket PC yes. devices, which is always crashing. So can you do something? And this is but, how. But somehow you needed to have this kind of racing aspect. Was it more coming uh, from from the real gliding because you you did some competitions there or? How did you felt that you know you know how it is to be a good glider pilot is one thing, but to be a good racing pilot is another thing. And on top of that, you had this vision with the electronic parts, so that had yeah. to be combined somehow, right? Yeah. So about the good pilot, that's quite relative. <laughs> it's it's the user perspective. So <laughs> <laughs> I would say I'm always in the in the top part, but never. On the highest <laughs> in the in the big competitions, that was also in the full size gliding. I was uh, two times second. Uh, yeah, well, the experience you really get in the competitions. You can fly as much as you can alone, but two or three competitions will give you like two or three years flying alone. Especially, I like to talk, uh, and I'm not shy, so I'm always asking others uh, what did they do, what is important, and then try to implement this. But at the end, I always do something differently, my yeah. own settings, my own perspective, and maybe it's good, maybe it's bad. Especially in the world, I think it was good because also you did some changes. <laughs> <laughs> I think what's very exciting, which we definitely need to talk about it. I mean, we kind of met for the first time, I think 2015 at the World Championship. Maybe That's pretty much yeah. when I also started. And I was also flying the T3000, like we all pretty much did. And and what, if you look back now, I think I did that a few times already. What what the experience or what is the way we did over those six years in terms of of models and, and electronics, what, what do you feel about it? At the end, uh, my experience personal is that we all as a pilot step two or three steps higher. We are always, I think, saying, yeah, yeah it's the glider, but it's really not the glider. It's it, it's the pack, the glider, the equipment, and the pilot. And especially 2015, I was flying uh, not my own plane because I didn't have it yet. Uh, uh, I was flying with Matei, the Arcus. Yeah, it's we could do much better. <laughs> so the plane was not an issue. Uh, we were tired. We were not. Um, Thinking clearly, we were just um, always trying to catch others, do what others are doing, not doing our own ideas. And many times it's <clears throat> because you don't read the sky enough, uh, good enough. So you say, oh, there are thermal, let's go there. But you have much, much better thermal here, you know. So you, you really have to get this experience and you, you need to know what you will fly and how you will fly. And yes, the others can always only help you, but they should not be the, 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 the decision makers, what others are doing, you know? So this is many, many times I saw that, that when I went my own, it was better. Okay. And fewer times was a mistake, I would say. I think tactical, I mean, you remember back then, if I look back, um, now we are talking about racing tactics and so on, and you're also improving the systems towards this. Back then, I think maybe, I don't get me wrong, Philip Colvin, the guys, for sure, they did some tactics. We tried as well. But, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we, just follow them. <laughs> we just followed them. Yeah, you know, 2015 was quite hot. You remember how hot yes. it was. Yes. It was unbelievably hot. It was like 40 degrees one week sun no wind and when it was wind it was bura which which destroyed all the tents immediately so it for me as because i didn't have a plane so i never flew 
scale glider. So I just went to competition and that's it. Maybe one day before with Matei, we made some test flights. That's it. Uh, I was not trained to fly one week in a hot condition, <laughs> especially uh, back then it was groups. Uh, uh, so it was a time window on which both of the pilots has to start. So that was quite stressful. Uh, so put it in the line because I have to fly also in the same, it is one hour or, or 45 minutes, whatever it was. So it was less tactics. So you could move the plane back and wait a bit, you know, and nowadays it's much, much more relaxed flying. And especially uh, because pilots are also much, much better, the ones which are on the scene and the ones who are coming will get there also. And what I see now in my, for myself flying, it's basically in the power words, I was constantly thinking what to do, is this okay? Navigation, uh, where it is, the glider orientation, the altitude and now it's, you know, it's like here in the back, it's yes. all clear. You just fly, you just think about the tactics. You know, it's, it's for me, it's like, John Elias was kind enough in, 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 in the words in Spain because I didn't have a helper. Uh, and he, he asked me, do you need a help in this round? I said, yes. And what do you need me to do? I say, tell me some joke, you know, <laughs> talk with me a bit so I'm relaxed because I know what I will do. Uh, whatever somebody else is telling you, which you're not flying with, you know, then you can be angry. Oh, why did you say it's there thermally? It's not, you know. That's at the end the pilot choice, what he do. And I'm always like some company when I fly, I always talk with others. Also when we meet like here in um, in the region to fly in the light class. Uh, even if we compete, we just talk like regular you know, uh, yes. thematics, just talk about and fly and do triangles. And that's, that's, I think it's super nice because it's relaxed. We do many triangles and after we land, we analyze what we did, he did wrong and how can we approve, you know, because during the flight, it's hard to judge what will come. So what do you think about your personal progression? If you if you look back, 2015, first world championship, you got, do you remember which place you got? I think also around fourth, but from the back. Okay, fourth from the yeah. back. Yeah. So it's always a perspective how you look at the list, right? Yeah, so. <laughs> you cannot always win. And then in 2017, we had this fantastic world championship in Grubing. You were also competing there, right? Yes, I was with Antares. Antares back then, okay. Yeah, yeah. I bought uh, from uh, Jaco Weber. I said, he was visiting me here and I said, Jaco, I have a problem. I'm, I'm searching for a glider to buy it secondhand and I can't find it. You know, at that time, there was absolutely no GPS triangle competition glider, none sort. There mm -hmm. were many scale, like a Bucky Wing, some Ventus 2 with... Haku profile like that, you know, but said, no, 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 I need, I think he said, yeah, I will sell mine, no problem, I, I'm buying new one, so you can have it, deal, and he said, but you have to promise me that you will not beat me, oh, <laughs> did <you> did? <laughs> I did, so, <laughs> so I said, I'm sorry, Chaco, but I'm really, I have the airbags out, and but <laughs> you are still not there, <laughs> It was a joke, but, but it was super nice Gubling and we had super fun. Which did you was, fly in Grubingen? Uh, I flew with uh, Rob Johnson from uh, New Zealand. Okay, yeah. He was uh, my teammate. He was flying the BS1, I think. Yeah. Right. yeah, yeah. Uh, so for me, the, the Grubingen was nice because it was the, the limitation in the height, 600 yeah. meters. That was super nice because everything was happening low. Uh, so nobody could go high and do some, you know, escaping. So everybody has to quit at 600 meters. <laughs> that was super nice for me. And I was really, Antares was really a thermoglider. I, you, okay. could, you could pull the elevator back, do it like this bank and just go up. 
but it was suffering. It was suffering in the glide profile. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> I remember I was flying at that time. I think you introduced the 17. Yes, I had yeah. the first two 17s. Yeah. Yeah, and I was flying in one group with Karel Kuderka. Yes. We were like in Spain, like wingmans, you know. <laughs> and first, uh, I would say second uh, lap, same height, and every lap. 30, 40 meters lower. I said, oh my God, you know that. And this is where you see that this plane was suffering because it was quite thick profile. But in the thermals, I could pick up. <laughs> so, but I mean, was, at the end, I was in the middle. I think I finished around 13. <clears throat> okay. Which was for me a super happy result. Uh, and the plane was still intact because you know what happened in Grublingen every yes, day, yes. Too, too less. <clears throat> Uh, so I was super happy, but immediately I said, okay, now I will sell it. So I sold it to Finland and then I bought FW70. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And FW17, I was training for the worlds and I crashed it. <laughs> <laughs> Just yeah, to... I mean, some people need to live from selling planes, so it's yeah. when sometimes it's something crashing. Yeah, and I said, <laughs> okay, now I will go prepare for the world in the Spain. Was training, took my time. I already scheduled how I would do some trainings, and I think the second training. <laughs> and then some guy who is here on the on the screen get me the seventeen. <laughs> a bit quicker because delivery dates are just too long one year. It was actually, honestly, there no behind plan. where the Diana is lying, yeah. that your 17 was lying because it was supposed to be my, my yeah, B model. He, and then uh, yeah. we swapped it quickly. But that, that was great, I think. That was great. Yeah, but I, I really, at the end, I, I didn't have any other choice because I got it like two months before the world yeah. and I had to assemble it and trim it and fly it. So basically I did five days of flying with the plane and I went to the world. Uh, of course it helped because it was one week before uh, the Challenge Cup. Yes. So I was flying uh, one week before also, but I didn't trim it anymore. So basically I did measure the polar of the plane, do the settings, did realize what this plane needs uh, to fly. I think good, and then uh, yeah, fourth place. So normally I'm always forward any any time. In grooving, <laughs> and I was in both disciplines forward. <laughs> in windsurfing, I was also always forward. So I'm happy you took that. But to be fair, in in Spain you got forward. Actually, I think if there would ha not have been that speed task, you could have probably been on the. Po Do you know? I don't know, but you know, you would have been on the podium, right? Yeah, Kunti was four points be, uh, in front of me. Okay. Yeah, and I think I would be second because uh, <sighs> I had like both speed rounds was like 500 and 600 points. So. Okay, okay. And only one striker, I think. So it was very bad result from the speed round. But it actually proves that uh, even like... I mean, you come to to the to Euro, Euro Cup races, but you're not like on every stop, of course, because you no. live further away. Yeah. So that's actually amazing because you pretty much rocked up there and then you were straight there, right? I mean, the, the curve is incredible. Yeah, but for me, I also did different change, which I also uh, learned in the, <laughs> the full-size gliding. Okay. Many, many competitions in the beginning, uh, it was, you know, we were quite young and the full size gliding competition, it's you fly, then you drink some beers and you're late in the night, still up and then you go bed and you're tired in the morning and so on. And then one year I decided, no, I will do strictly eat enough, drink enough, uh, after flying, hydrate, eat and a lot of rest. And that competition I was First, until the second, due to the last day, and the last day, it was my mistake. I came five minutes too early to the to the finish line, so it was five minutes thrown away, and I lost for five points. 
So the mm. yeah, the winner was like ten thousand forty four hundred points, and I played ten thousand three hundred ninety five. So that's like two weeks of of competing every day, five six hours in the air. So in the Spain, I did now the same. Uh, basically, I really drank like four liters of water per day. Okay. Uh, every second day, me and Andreas uh, went for jogging for one hour uh, in the shade, resting during the, the the hits. So I was feeling quite relaxed. Okay. I was not tired. Uh, I went to the to, to the start line relaxed, and also. Uh, I would say the biggest plus was that at the end the contest director uh, allowed to use uh, the motor also in the scale. If you have it for uh, safety, just tape it. Just tape it because of the mandarin trees was quite high <laughs> when you <laughs> when you are quite low. <laughs> so that was a big a big plus that the pilot has a chance to. Put the throttle and he's out. Yes, yes, definitely. So all of that was helping me, and also some some tactics, which was a gamble. At the end, you know, I saw Philip Kolb. He did eight rounds in one evening heat. Everybody was landing. He went the last one, eight rounds. So next day, I said, I think it will happen again. So everybody went, and I just say. To, to to the Silvio turn of the tow machine. I still have 10 minutes. <laughs> and Peter Nemeth says, what are you waiting for? Even worse weather? And I said, no, I waiting for another weather because everybody except me in this group was in the air and okay. everybody started. And I said, they are just more or less gliding and sinking. So I will wait 10 more minutes. I went up, started last minute and after point one, I did six, others did four. <laughs> so that was, and I was flying alone. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, people, big space, yeah. People, people were basically landing when I took off. So we that's the tactics. We had this flight exactly the same in 2015 in Vipava. We had this one flight where everybody landed after. I don't remember anymore. One or two laps, three laps, because the airs are really crazy in Vipava. Mm -hmm. And Philip Kolb went on the right side towards the mountains and, and, and kind of rescued himself and did when the air was good. He was, he was going around. I remember we were sitting there with a drink in the <laughs> evening sun and we were like, one, yeah. two. <laughs> it's pre it's yeah, pretty much yeah. the same. Yeah. But I think that's the only disadvantage that scale class has that if you towed up and you like, I had the lock in Grubing in this last year that I found the thermal which I stayed in and I waited until the end. But mostly yeah. you kind of have to go, right? Yeah, but you know, also in uh, in works in the group again, it was quite a, quite a lot of shifting the plane back in the line. Yeah. Uh, also, I did it many many times because when you see that it's not good when the clouds are dissipating, and in the group again, it was quite a lot of thermal activities always coming. The clouds are always coming. You just said, okay, over there, I see the clouds are moving here, so I will wait. So everybody was just like positioning back and back and back and back and then they have to go because then it was out of time and in Grubingen for me it was like one hit nobody was preparing the glider and and, uh, and the line was opened okay so I immediately grab it because I saw the bird let's go and I got super nice air didn't lose anything in three or four laps and then the air stopped so when everybody came no more. So I got a thousand. And the, the day or two later, I put it to the back <clears> and everybody was in the bad air and then the good air came. You know? So it's that's also a bit of luck and quite experience, which I still don't think I have in the because I don't fly as much as I would like. I have too okay. much programming to do. Okay. Um, but at the end, yeah, it's uh, I would say I did the F3K and F5J, and then I get to the GPS triangle. And I learned the most in GPS triangle. 
So whatever I fly now, I'm super relaxed because you gain so much experience. You have to uh, organize, you know, navigation, flying straight, uh, thermalink, the, 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 how much time do you have left, the tactics, where to go, how fast to fly in between the thermals. When you get used to that, then it's super easy. Then it's so relaxed. And this is what you can see that in, in Slovenia, we have these Aeroto meetings, yeah. which basically like 15 pilots with scale planes uh, came. And only like me and Mate, maybe some others are just thermaling and flying around whole day and others are just landing because oh, where did you find that? How do you know it's there, you know? Yeah, you have to go. You, at least I always say you don't need to come to compete for a win. You just come to get the experience. Yeah. And this is why I also know this year organizing the Vipava Challenge Cup. This is not for the competition. This is for the experience to come there, to meet, to see each other, to get any support from me for the electronics, the equipment, and how to fly the task as also other very nice pilots uh, are coming. So we have spare time. And last year, 2020, it was like first day, everybody was flying like triangles, 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 triangles. Then the second day, they already saw me and others, the local guys, why they're not flying? <laughs> because we knew we have from 12 till two o'clock, that's a boomer. <laughs> and before <laughs> we, we just do some tactics and trimming the plane, you know, and then we were just <laughs> waiting for these good days. And basically in GPS Triangle League, I was like 55. Okay. After we power one week of flying, I was third on the on, on the list and then uh, the brookman came and in two days i think he did 60 triangles in 60. two days 60 all together he was just flying but it was a lot of these strong ones 15 17 and it immediately like that you know so he was super happy to go nice yeah, when, when he go here yeah. And he go home. I mean, at the end of the day, I mean, those camps you're organizing or those workshops we do, of course, they help a lot. But at the end, it's always nice if you can just join up with a few guys um, to fly together. You you just learn and, and get the experience as you do on the race as well, right? Yeah, the, the, the only negative side uh, on the on the GPS triangle, it's, it's the price of the plane. And the price of the plane automatically gets a lot of pressure on the pilot because when you are competing and you don't want to crash. And if you have this in the back of the head that I will crash, I will crash, I will crash, you are automatically start slowing down, not getting into the thermos with others and so on. So this is why I think to get more um, comfort with flying with big planes and tactics, I think people should start flying these challenge cups, which are not so much strict and so much push, 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 push. I especially like the most this open challenge cup, which you can just fly and the best six flights in whole week, it's counted. So there is no pressure. If you don't feel flying, don't fly. If you feel flying, fly. And then you will gain more and more and more experience and you will be more and more and more relaxed. And you will see that if the planes are flying with the same speed in the same direction, they will not crash. If they fly opposite, they will crash. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> and, and we could see that in, in the world in Spain, how nice it was flying tip to tip. It was really like, like this going, but not two, three together. It was. I wasn't expecting that this actually will ever work out like it does. I mean, remember we were in Spain, we were sometimes guys were really low. Uh, tip to tip flying of course uh, mostly like the, the the better pilots i would say but still um they all kind of gained this experience and the whole thing got much safer than it was in in the past and i wasn't expecting this actually it, or what you think it is it's the pilots the skills they're more relaxed or for sure for sure uh, i could i could tell that uh, when i was with uh, with kunzi 
together. So he's uh, 22 and mine 17, flying tip to tip for last, I think, three laps. Well, for sure, I said, okay, we will have the same result. And for sure, on the pre last lap, or I would say my last, but not his, I said that one, it's for sure. But next one, I don't think we will do it. Yeah, we, we gained to the last line on the same height. It was like, I think, 90 or 85 meters. It's oh, <laughs> and then and then he said he was inside, and he said, "Andre, please go a bit right so I can go around the point. <laughs> Otherwise, I will have to go this way." And I did mistake, so I just pulled it, and my plane went nose down, <laughs> and I stole it. And when I recovered, I was immediately like five six meters lower. And even if I would be still up there with these mandarin trees, I would be like sweating like hell. I don't think I would go, but he has so much experience. He went, he finished, and he, I said, okay, you have one more. He said, no, two more. <laughs> so he already beat me before that, so I didn't oh, know. That. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, yeah, he was thermaling before I didn't, so he started <laughs> in front of me. So I said, ah, oh, okay. <laughs> But personality yourself, because you're probably one of the only guys which is able to measure the planes and, and, and knowing what's happening towards setting and so on. Do you think you had an advantage in terms of knowing how to set your planes? Or because the Albatross is the Albatross app. I mean, you can understand as good as it is. Where you think is your strongest point in terms of competition flying today? Oh, I, uh, hard to say uh, because I really don't think that me measuring the plane has so much more uh, in the end result okay. yes I just get there quicker like we know Kunzi was streaming the 22 one year but he got it's it. Not enough. It's not <laughs> enough. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and I did in five flights. So that's that's the only difference. But at the end, I still don't know where to put turbulators and so on. You know, this is my weak region, uh, and this is where the others are stronger. But at least, <clears throat> uh, what I learned is that the feelings when you are inexperienced is. You, you shouldn't trust them. It's better to trust the instrument than your feeling. Uh, and once you have the experience, you just confirm your feelings with the instrument. So uh, at the end, this is what I told you before, like three years ago, uh, when I presented the Snipe and Raven in Vipava, I said, the guys who are now at the top, they don't need it they will not gain as much as the guys who are starting them. Because, you know, at that time, it was still first was like 400 points before, in front of second. Now it's like a couple of points, you know. So it, Sometimes yeah, so, one digit, right? Yeah, so this is, this is why I like now that we are more close together. And uh, especially like what I had another experience is I went here and present this uh, light class to one uh, F5J pilot who was quite good in the podiums many times. And I put it in. Here you have the earphones. Go and fly. I will navigate you. And he started to thermal. And I said, hey, why are you thermaling? It's a thermal. I checked the albatross, minus 0 0.3, minus 0 0.4. I said, no, it's not. Yeah, yeah, it is. Believe me, I said, well, I believe the instrument, <laughs> so it's not. And after two minutes of, 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 of <laughs> thermalink, he was like, hmm, I'm just farther away and lower. Okay, <laughs> it was not. <laughs> Actually, not sure if I like that thing about the albatross. I was flying with, with Reto, my friend, light class yesterday. Yeah. And I went to the end of the end of the planet and got this thermal. And then I started to thermal and I thought it's going to work out. And then the, the Albatross told me, um, uh, 
climbing yeah. zero point <laughs> one, and then I was yeah. like, mm. and I was like, ah, oh, it's gonna get better, and then zero point one. I was like, mm, it's not gonna work out. <laughs> but, yeah, this is this is like um, what I would like to point out that yeah, I was like uh, last year or two years ago yeah. now. I don't know if you remember in UK with uh, John Greenfield um, Academy. And yes, what he told the pilots is you will get a lot of voices, a lot of information. Try to focus only on one. And for me, it was confusing, you know, why all the informations are important. But then when I remember, yes, when you have too much information, it's confusing. And especially <clears throat> when you get there, this is why you can turn off more or less all in Albatross. So you can just only add one. And once you get this uh, information, then add second and so on. Everybody like was thermaling, thermaling, thermaling. And you know what we do in thermals, pulling, pulling and stalling and pulling, pulling and stalling. And in the end, this is why I said, I have to get this, how much altitude you gain. And that's an, an information. This is why I always say my thermal warrior was 2.5 and the others came and said yeah i had five meter thermal i said no we were together and i beat you so no way yes he had one time a five meter but in overall it was bad and i only am interested in how much my thermal warrior is and how much altitude i gained and many times I was thermalic and after 30 seconds, I heard gain one meter, Whew, go, <laughs> go, <laughs> leave it. <laughs> but that's but, another, another thing if you understand <coughs> it right. I mean, that's great when you have uh, uh, like, um, how it's called a co-pilot at, uh, at, at the competition or at the training, he can support you with all those informations. I guess we are on a level now where we mostly understand what's happening or what's coming from the system. And having this support with the, with the gaining altitude, it's also nice sometimes if you shift to your plane a bit in the thermal that you can actually hear or see uh, improvements. Yeah, so basically the, the idea is that uh, your average value, which is the integer uh, integral the <coughs> average of 20 seconds, will tell you this. So if you shift and your average value gets better, you stay here. If your average go towards, go back. Yes. Uh, because your gain altitude will be the sum of the start of the thermal till you end, till you stop circling. So this is quite harder to calculate. Okay, I gained before it this five meters. Now I gained two meters. Okay, yeah. So this is why everything is possible and Pilots just enables it or set it up once he understands it. Because if you don't understand what the system is telling you, it can only harm you. Because if you don't know what that is, then you're just confused. Yeah. And why I did all that is because I fly alone. Basically 95% or 98% of my flying, I'm alone because I have nobody here. In Slovenia, I also have no tow plane nearby. So I need to have a face or whatever to climb and I need my personal helper, which is basically Albatross. Uh, so this is why all of this came true. So that's also the background why all of that stuff is in there. <laughs> we go into systems a little bit later. Let's talk a bit about planes. I mean, I know you're a big fan of the light class, of course, as we all, I would say. It's a great um, entry to the class also for the F F5J pilots. Looking at all those classes, um, the light class, the sport class, you were not flying yet, you will get a plane for the world and scale class. What do you think? I mean, we all know to start the light class is definitely best and the sport class, but in terms of your personal feeling in, in, in racing, what did you experience over the years? What, what, what's cool or what's cool? Well, it's, it's like, you know, being the F5J pilot, I did quite a lot of flying with F5J planes. And especially I was flying always the Explorer 2.5 kilos at that time. 
and I was competing against others who were flying 1.3 kilo Explorer, you know, and it was, it, it just went into the direction that everything was just so light, so fragile that you couldn't do the loop, you would break the plane. And for me at that time, it just became a bit of boring because everybody with these light planes from 80 meters, if it's a bit of the thermal, you can do it. It then you just destroying the plane on the hitting the dot, you know. So basically I had the plane two years in my basement. I never flew it. It was just there at that time I bought the Ultima the one, okay. which was also 1.3, 1.2 kilo. Super fun uh, for fly. And, but at the end, you know, for me, if I don't have any goal to do something, you go there, do some thermal link, and then just, okay, you land it, and that's it, you know, okay, I, I did two climbs from 10 meters, that's it, <laughs> I'm happy. And then the idea came with, with discussion in, in Switzerland with Uli and Pascal and me were sitting there and I had this idea, but I had to talk with Pascal if he would support it in GPS Triangle League. Uh, and then I start testing it two years ago now. <clears throat> in the winter time, I was flying with Ultima triangles just to confirm the concept, and it was nice. I was just flying, flying, freezing out there, you know, it was cold, but at least I was doing something, you know. And then I said, okay, we got a nice offer from Bohuslau uh, to get the Infinity ship it and once i got it i said wow what a nice plane because before i was always like ultima was um, a vacuum on the positive so the, the wing was a bit okay orange like you know skin and now another mold uh, glider super nice finish everything came together super nice i was so thrilled i put in everything i already designed my installation, I always designed that the equipment will be in the best place. This is the biggest mistake with others who just put the equipment somewhere, <laughs> which is they're not working. But nevertheless, I went out, I throw it. You told me some experience, you know, how you like it or, or, or don't like it. And then I said, I hated it. Okay. It, it was like, fuck, what is now this? I, I, I wrote to Bohuslav. Hey, what is now this? And yeah, do you have like this settings? No, <laughs> this is what I was experienced before. I do my own, my personal, what I'm thinking should work. And it was not working at all. The plane was constantly spinning. I said it has like very big flaps and very big ailerons. So very slow movement needed flaps, leave it alone to have a working wing. No snap flap like crazy all wing like crazy movements and then it was like wow like do it like this go around like crazy push it 100 plus kilometers per hour wow <laughs> you know you just and then it started then the triangles and i said at the beginning when they asked me what's possible i said well i did with ultima eight but light uh, 1.2 uh, kilos I think 11 would be possible and then 18 you did 19 <laughs> but two seconds <laughs> too slow. Ah. I said wow that's margin here let's go and it was last year it was really nice flying so and this is why I really enjoyed it yes because it's quickly together throw it back of my house I throw it I fly it if I if I go and fly the big one I have a problem because, okay, to drive it to the airfield, no problem, it's 15 minutes. But I have an active airfield. So if they fly, I cannot fly. Uh, basically, because when they are doing the final approach or the, how do you call it, the, uh, the last lap before landing, they're flying over my region where I fly the triangles. And with the scale, it's 500 meters and 500 meters altitude. So no way. So I have to wait. So you can there and just say, we will fly now. How long? 
for two hours. Oh, the good weather will go. And then, <laughs> or you wait, or you go home and try again the next time, or the next time. So at the end, I just pack everything and drive to Vipava. There it's all clear. I fly there for one or two days and I, and I go home. So that was at the end the, the best solution that I could fly something. Otherwise, I could just do some tests and that's it. So this is why I prefer the light class to start with. It's cheap. Uh, uh, last year when the light class started, I got a lot of Facebook uh, messages, um, calls with other guys flying like... Uh, explorer experience and all old f5j planes and love it and this is why like also john greenfield says you don't need to buy a new plane you just buy what you are feeling good at what you are relaxed with flying and just put the equipment in and do the triangles because you will suffer with navigation anyway yes I think definitely that's a very important thing because if you fly alone, it's anyway more fun to have a kind of older, heavier plane. It also creates a little bit more energy, I would say. It doesn't really matter, no? No, this is where I don't agree because, okay. yes, everybody is just, <clears throat> that's the downside of GPS triangulic because okay. it only shows the best five laps. So you don't see that the pilot posted 100 flights, but you only see five flights. Yes. Only five, the best. And if you check it now, you are already like, oh, the first one already has 83 laps, you know? So that's okay. unbelievable. <clears throat> but no, yes, I enjoy when it's super nice conditions and you do like this 18, 19 laps. That's wow. But you have to, you train this to recognize these conditions before you start so you start with full power what you can do no penalty then you just go you don't go up you just go <laughs> and every lap only two meters higher not more because you have to push 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 and then you see <clears throat> how much time and energy you lose when you do a little mistake and when you fly light and alone and i see myself the most enjoyable it's like eight to 10 laps. That's the most fun for me because then you thermal, but in 20 minutes, then you're low, get a bubble, thermal it, go next one, bubble, thermal it. And then it's nice. Otherwise you just, you fly. I mean, in light class, I would say even six laps are, can be very exciting. The, the, the only thing I see for me personally, yesterday we were flying the two of us, then the light class is really cool. I, I really like it because then you really kind of have a battle, right? But yeah. if I fly alone with the light class plane, if the excitement alone, is yeah. not the same than on the bigger one, right? If I fly alone, I'm really trying to do the, 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 the tactics. Okay. I said, okay, here is a thermal. I got it. And I just left it just to catch it again. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. I don't need no, I, I'm not going for laps uh, like 12 or 15 laps. Okay, I got a thermal at 100 meters. <clears throat> I climb it to 160. And I let, even if it's two meters, I left it go quickly around and hit it again because you will need this anyway sometime in the competition to find the same thermal again. Or even better, <clears throat> if I have a thermal like one meter, 1.2, which I say it's for the light class, it's supreme. Uh, and then I see a bird like, Yes, 50 meters away or 200 meters away and I'm training myself how long do I need to judge if the, the, the bird has better thermal because you have to wait at least one or two circles to see and always the bird will win you so if the bird is out climb you that doesn't mean it's better thermal <laughs> because even if you are in the same thermal with the bird he will up climb you so this is what I train at uh, when I fly alone, but at least I have some goal because when you are in the light, in the in the F5J flying, okay, what you do is you get the thermal at 20 meters, you climb it to 40 meters, go out and go 20 meters again and try to get again. <clears throat> but here you have to do one kilometer trip around the triangle and find it again. That's three minutes later. That's a big difference. You will, you will see, I mean, like you said, that's actually what I wanted to hear. In the light class, 
it's really interesting because it's so tactical. Like, like I, was, I was chatting last week with uh, Julian Benz when he, when he was flying in, in, in Tannhausen, he really jumped from one thermal to the other one. And even too extreme, like he, he climbed never high, like honestly, okay. never over 100 meters. And then he continued. And, and, and you really, I think if you, if you start to fly this light class particular, you have to teach yourself to actually continue to fly and not stay in a thermal and, 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 and kind of wait because. Yeah, look, in, in Vipava, we had uh, basically, I'm quite proud of, but it was like a quiet competition. But at the end, it was the first light class competition, not contest, <coughs> was in Slovenia in Vipava. Okay. Uh, so we organized this, I think, two or three weeks before the first contest light class. Mm -hmm. uh, and basically in Slovenia, we have quite a lot of top F5J pilots, and all of them now are flying the, the light class. They were lost. Look, okay. they're, they're super good, nice uh, thermal pilots. And even the Marts family, who is flying at Vipava airfield all the time, I beat him like hell. Because okay. they, they, they just stopped in the thermal. They just stopped and thermal it. And I didn't thermal it. I just flew it. I flew it. I flew it. And then after one time, I was just quiet. And, and Till and Mart said, hey, Andre, did you make any turn till now? I said, only in the shape of a triangle. <laughs> and it was like I already did five laps and they didn't do zero. Just thermaling. <laughs> Because the thermal was like 0 0.3, 0 0.4, but that's enough to stay in the air. Of you course. just float, you just float, you just float. And they were just scared that if they don't thermal this one now as high as possible, that they will lose. But that's then, you know, a game changer. Do you have numbers in terms of speed for the light class? Because I'm, I'm still like, when I'm flying, I'm trying to set up that, that infinity uh, to improve it all the time. Um, what speed wise would you fly? I mean, of course, every plane is different, but what we learned through the last year, actually the planes are not so far apart. So, yeah, well, it's for me, it's still tricky uh, to decide when to put the ballast in or not. <clears throat> yeah, many times was situation when I said, it's a bit windy, uh, not strong wind, but you, you get carried away. Everybody put ballast in, you know. I said, I don't know, because I still feel many, many times that when you get a weak thermal in a condition with, with no thermal at all, then you need to be light. Okay. And it was correct decision because they couldn't stay in a very, very small bubble I could stay in. They dropped out nothing else, they landed. And I did like three, four laps more because I just get that bubble, drifted away, find it again, drifted away, then wait for another one. So it's very hard to really say, should you go fully ballasted in a windy or should you go light in a windy? You so tell me this because I always have to ballast inside. <laughs> for me, ballast, it's, it's also super nice. And, uh, you know, you told me at the beginning that when the infinity is fully ballast, it, yes. it, it no steps a lot when you do a yes. hard pull. <clears throat> well, when I told that before that it was this experience with I get the first flights, but it was because of the wrong settings. So now in my settings, I can put 2.4 uh, kilos, so maximum 30 grams, I can pull the elevator back and like this. So Ooh. it will not, it will not go to the no spin, nothing. So it the, the radius just gets a bit bigger. Okay. And it has more penetration. So then you really need to have a good compensating tube to find the thermal, otherwise you just fly over it because we are flying faster. And basically my settings in the flaps in the light class is, I would say 10 kilometer different. So that means in a thermal, like 35, normal 45, speed 55. And this is what I trim. So it's 10 kilometer difference and somehow this goes. <laughs> 
do you have your uh, radio settings um, adjusted to certain speed from your model? This is what you try to achieve? Uh, this is what I always try to program, but I never do. Okay. Uh, so, <laughs> so basically, in Unity, that's now for the right class, uh, I have a uh, two-click two elevator trim. That means when I'm light, <coughs> I do two clicks in front. When I'm full, I do two clicks back. That's it. And all the setting is the same, and the planes really flies in a speed, flies steady at around 58 kilometers per hour. So I'm on the start quite nice. And then you push it and immediately you got 80, 90. And in terms of gravity point, do you fly it on light class planes further forward or? You know, you know my system for, for CG. You saw the picture. So I, I don't have any of these high tech. I don't know why, but. <laughs> <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. Uh, it's uh, at the end I just start flying with what the manufacturer says it should be and then normally I move quite back more but you know that's the only reason why I measure the gravity point because I have to tell some guys where to put I also like to yeah, fly. but you, you know, you know that you said for the 17, you said 138 yeah. or 142, yeah. and I said, okay, I've measured mine because my feeling was this should be, but I was still not the happiest. And it was what you recommended, you know. Uh, at the end, when I came to Tortosa, we put it on the okay. on the scale, and it's, you know, only one millimeter difference. I said, okay, but. <laughs> The biggest issue with the 17, uh, or not the 17, on the face, is that pilots maybe are forgetting that when they remove the propeller, that's 70 grams. It is. They have to put 70 grams ballast into the nose, and that makes a big difference if you forgot to put... <laughs> the plane just flies strange. <laughs> You're always flying with the propeller at home, and on the competition, you remove it, and what's going on with the plane? <laughs> I know, I know, I know. I always put the propeller into the fuselage. This is why in Tortosa was great. Propeller in all the time, so the CG was there all the time. And yeah, so that's my experience. If you ask me where my CG is on Infinity, I don't know. It's on the point where I like it, so I don't know. What do you reckon, like, you have not been flying Spore class yet, you will be joining that soon. What do you think? Well, I, you... I, I, I already created the, the, the sport class task for, for the place in front <laughs> of my house. So I'm waiting for that. Okay. Uh, well, I think uh, I will like it because the, the look and how to it basically big infinity and infinity it's 3.5. Five, if five, yeah. yeah, and Apollo, it's 4.6, so one meter bigger plane. I'm ex really expecting the same handling and just push, push, push. <laughs> yeah, but, but that's basically it. In flying terms, the F5J and the Sport class planes are, are really similar, looking like at the Calvados or like at the Apollo from us or even DNA. But what you will experience, what is great, like what you said before in terms of tactics, flying to the same thermal again, with sport class planes, we had many races where you were assembling with your colleague at the, at, in the same thermal, mm -hmm. and then you're like, let's make a lap. And if you really accelerate out of the thermal, you're back in one minute 30. Yeah. And the guy, I remember I had this one flight we couldn't see in Tannhausen. I was... And then I came back to the same thermal, almost at the same altitude. And I was like, ha, 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 ha. <laughs> <laughs> it's the worst in the sport class. Because even in scale class, it takes much longer until you... Much, yeah, it, much, it, it much is much longer. And also, uh, once you are quite lower, yes, you get the nerves, you know. Because when you spin the, the, the scale class, like seven meter glider, it loses like 20, 30 meters like that. And once you are low, you really don't want to lose. You immediately go and start to fly faster and you get nervous. 
But with light or sport, I am not expecting this because even if the nose goes down, full power, you are up. <laughs> you, that's, you, you really have like in one second, you have full power. Also face in the scale, you put a full power, it still needs to get, you know, it, it's heavy. It's like 20 kilos. Yes. But uh, for me, like the biggest um, surprise was that when I did 17 laps, and I checked the, the, the lap time, it was 47 seconds per lap. I said, wow, that's crazy. <laughs> that's really crazy. And I lost only three meters, you know, that, that you really see that what the plane and everybody says at the beginning, F5 Japanese, they will not move. That's, that's ah, you know, slow planes. Now you see <laughs> one kilometer in less than a minute. So the average, it's like 70 kilometers per hour. That's wow. Normally you have like up to three minutes per lap, you know, but when you start speeding it up, it goes. This is, this is when the, 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 you put your margin, the level higher, and you see what the plane is capable of. And really we are flying the planes in only one small aspect. They are capable much more. Yeah. And that's, I think it's, it, it's the best in GPS trend because you are forced to go there, to go there, and to go there, and to come back. <laughs> Otherwise, in FMJ, just say, I think there is a terminal, and you are there 10 minutes, and you go back. <laughs> I remember we had uh, one competition in Grübingen where, where one team, I'm not going to tell the name, but they thought they have turning point three, and the wind was quite strong in the other direction. And they continued to the turning point one, and they thought they missed the corner until they realized they didn't have the third. <laughs> they had to fly back. I think this is probably the, 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 the most simple thing about GPS flying is that you always have to make sure you yeah. take the right turning point to, in terms of wind direction as well. Yeah, right? and, and this, is, this is also when you get, but this is normal. You start lower and then you get higher. And... Uh, for me, I really experienced that uh, in the light class last year, flying almost every day because it was quite nice um, summer uh, and spring. We always train to do a good index. So you said index 108 in light class, I would say, supreme. Index 105 in scale class, perfect. Whatever you do, less than 115, perfect. But when you do some basic mathematics, what do you have to fly in the time you have to reach what you desire? I would say 18, 19 laps. Then you see that you have to fly all the laps 110% index. And when you're flying 100 kilometers per hour and do the pull, and you really hope that you hit the point if you miss it, Ah, shit, you know, then you are suffering. It's a good weather and I miss the point for half a meter, you know, then it's, and then you are under pressure for 20 minutes that your adrenaline is high. You're flying like full elevator down, go, 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 go. And you're just banking like this, like hell pulling. Till the end, you really are, your nerves are here and your skills have to work together. And when the Brookman was here two years ago or one year ago, uh, we went here to the local airfield to, that I showed him the, the system. <clears throat> and then we did very basic an analysis. And I said, okay, Gernot, you see here, you missed, it was quite uh, from the point one to the point two, it was blowing the wind like, 10 kilometers or 15 kilometers per hour. So it was not a really strong wind. And he missed the point. We checked it then later on the CEO program. He missed the point for two meters. So that's half of the wing. Yeah. yeah. Half of the half wing. So, <laughs> uh, and what he had to do, he then turned back into the wind, going back to the sector and turning back and continuing. And I said, look, now I will do an analyze. At that point, when you miss the point, 
you were, I would just say, 400 meters. <clears throat> okay. And when you realize that you missed it, turn it around, going into the wind, into the point, turn around, and being on the same, basically, spot, it was 30 seconds later and 20 meters lower. At that time, he was already past the point three and going to the finish. And that is two meter difference. And this is why people, uh, the pilots should be realizing that small mistake had a big impact into the result. Only one missed turn at the end, 20 meter difference can get you the last lap or not. So basically it really starts at the starting line, speed, altitude, pull, this is the start. If you mess this up, if it's not a good thermal day, then you have to restart if you can. <laughs> Otherwise you already lost it. <laughs> So you should tell Gernot personally again that he should take the index not as serious and try to, to go safe. That would help us all, I think. <laughs> Andre, that would help. <laughs> I did provocate him quite a bit in Vipala, okay. but it was, okay. it, it was a nice uh, gesture. Uh, he was flying the big plane, uh, but he was suffering. <laughs> he was really... It was just the interval he get, you know, really oh bad weather or bad thermals, and he was suffering. And at that point, some German guy who was there just visiting, he had like a four meter Foka. And I said, just put it in and go fly, but you will not fly 500 meters. Let's do it 350 or 400 meters triangle. Okay. And he was just, you know, flying. And I was saying, go, 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 go. Don't thermal. No, no, but it's a Mario. Don't thermal. Just go. Basically, we had a very local small thermal, but we are not have to go around it, you know, <laughs> because his task was bigger. And and I said, Gernot, how many? Oh, I'm now finishing six. And I said, well, we already have seven. <laughs> He's beating you with four meter focus. <laughs> <laughs> and he was like, no, no, I will beat him. I will beat him to show he was already fighting. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but at the end, uh, also Bettina was there and she was just laughing. <laughs> <laughs> but at the end, it was, this is what you can see that if you have a very local thermal, it can run very nice in smaller triangle, but in the bigger triangle, you have to go in, use it, go out. And it's What's different that? tactics, different tactics, yeah. That's actually my next question. Um, pilots, I mean, you've been at the Worlds in, in you, you've been every <coughs> the last three times and you know most of the guys from all over the uh, world. What is your experience in terms of, of racing pilots? Some good thoughts about, you saw on some guys, what they can do incredible well or, or so on. Well, what I like now is that I'm seeing more and more new pilots. At least we all like, of course. Yeah, that's because three years ago, I personally knew everybody who bought my system because we were on the scene together. But now I don't know anybody <laughs> who is buying. So I think there will be a lot of new pilots joining us in the competitions. Especially when I come to the competitions, me personally, I don't know how Corp knows where to fly. Still, I don't know because many times I was with him in, in Tortosa. I just didn't have nerves anymore. It was like very weak thermal drifting us away to, towards the mountains and he was still there and I was still there. I said, ah, <laughs> let's go. <laughs> I think I will find something else. Well, I didn't. And yeah, he got it. At the end, this thermal picked it up uh, but it, he was drifted quite far away. And that's then flying skills at the end. Uh, when you don't feel comfortable anymore, that's too, too far away from me, go. It saved the plane. You will get another fight later on. <clears throat> so, Kunzi, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> he is also so, so, such a nice person. Uh, you also, it's, you know, for, for me, I understand you that 
people are coming and ask you a lot for the planes and people are asking me a lot for the equipment and you are just dealing with the pilots, other pilots, and then you just go and fly and now you just skip in and fly. And then everybody's calling me, Andre, hey, I'm like, here. I can't, I'm flying, you know. <laughs> uh, but nevertheless, Chris Adrian, it's also improving more and more and more. I didn't fly with Chaco Weber two years now. We didn't meet in the contest. So I don't know, but I was checking his results. So he's also climbing up and he's very happy when he do a nice result. Florian Schambeck, I would say he's a steady rock. He's always there, you know. Unbelievable, no? Always there. I don't know how, but he's always there. Uh, and I, I feel sorry for George for the Quintus crash. That was quite <laughs> a But nevertheless, I'm not flying a lot of the contest, you know. And especially, you know, like um, Hage and Michael and so on. You know, these pilots are so like always smiling, always <laughs> enthusiastic. And in the world, I was always saying, oh, who is flying over there? There are the big Quintus and also Danny is there. And then I turn around and I see Hage far away. <laughs> you know? Oh, this guy has the <laughs> But you know, Hage, I tell you Hage, I mean, he's professor in thermal flying because of all his experience in the mountain. But I tell you, every time he's taking the risk of, of going low somewhere, yeah. he's dreaming about this one day he had in Grübingen when he went behind the pilot box and he got this magic thermal. <coughs> he, he got that one at the end of the world yeah. and he climbed back up and he destroyed everyone. And I think every time he's flying away, he's like, it's gonna be just gonna like be that. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> and also like Martin Winter, it's getting with him. I really met him. The first day I met him was in Totosa. Okay. So basically we are almost neighbors. Vienna and Celia, like three hours drive apart, but we meet 2000 kilometers away in Spain. <clears throat> I came there, I see the guy flying JS1. After 20 minutes, I see the guy shouting, watch out, watch out, <laughs> crashing the JS1. I said, oh, he just came and he crashed the only glider. <laughs> it was, but he stayed and he get experience. He got another glider from South African guys, the BS1, so he could share the glider. And then we meet again in Hofheckenberg. I don't know if I pronounce it correctly. Perfectly. Yeah. And he said, Andre, can you be my teammate? <clears throat> I said, sorry, Martin, I just came for a glider because I don't have a glider and I just came to pick it up and I will drive home tomorrow. But at least today I will help you. And then he says, uh, Andre, how to tow? I never towed. <laughs> So he came to the competition, first time contest, never thought he was always using the self launch. And Bob Hefenberg was also the, the, the runway is like this and the task is like that. So he was used of flying into the course of the, the, the airstrip and he was completely lost. And now he's gaining every time higher, every competition, it's higher, higher, higher. So super nice to see. And also uh, Manfred Rumer, so Ooh, reluctant Manfred guy. Rumer. He just go with the kite in the morning, destroying the air, what's going on. Then he do some low passes with Quintus and then he beat everybody. <laughs> so amazing. So amazing. And oh, it's, I mean, it's incredible also that the portfolio of pilots are, which are on the tour now. And it's also great that sometimes that other people are winning and the podium is not always looking the same, of course. But I think over the last few years, really the, the variety got, got, got much better, right? A much better, the, the, the level improved incredibly. For sure, you are the guy to tell this because I don't visit so much contest competition. But yeah, at least I see progress. Also in Slovenian, like Jure Marts, he's also uh, 
climbing higher. But you can see there a big difference as he's an F5J pilot getting into the scale <clears throat> with his own Quintus. And he was suffering at the beginning. You know, it, it's different. It is different. It, it's quite faster you fly, longer you fly, and also 30 minutes and farther away you are and so on. So in the light class, we are like this close. He has the tactic. He, he knows how to fly his dynamic, like dynamic. He's supreme pilot in the scale class. He's getting there. But I think over there, he will need at the end not self-made plane, you know, homemade plane. Uh, at the end, it's still, you know, when you do it only one, you know, it, it, it can be, you know, his wing was a bit twisted and so on. So performance was suffering <clears throat> at the end, but he's also getting there, you know, and I'm really thrilled for this year, what will happen. I hope the Corona will allow us to fly at least. <clears throat> And maybe I will be again fourth from the last. Everybody will beat me. Maybe. <laughs> I don't know. There's, there's four class worlds. I tell you, if they're going to happen, which I'm actually pretty sure, the planes are so close together. And the people are so skilled. Even though, of course, there are some newer guys. I think it's going to be very, very interesting. I. Who knows? I hope so. I hope that I get the plane soon so I can train. <laughs> and then we will see what will happen. <laughs> you get it the same day as Kunzi on Sunday at the prize giving. Prize, that's good. At least I will get a nice prize, which I paid. <laughs> <laughs> no, we'll see. I mean, that's going to be cool. And also the, the light class events we start the season of. I mean, let's see what we can do. But. Uh, that's pretty yeah. much. You want to tell anything about um, some R&D work you're doing on the RC electronics? Basically, I think it would be really nice. Yeah, basically, uh, year 2020 was at the end for me quite lucky that it was uh, less competition. As we knew, it was the Albatross was suffering. All the problems which were hidden inside came out. Unbelievable, <clears throat> because we just didn't do any base, many major uh, changes in the foundation, but everything was on the limit with the performance and it was crashing like hell, you know. So that year was a redesign of Albatross, complete redesign to have it done correctly. And now we are in a good way uh, for the for the next years. Uh, and this was basically done by the Android programmer. So I did development of a full size glider, which you can see now on the website that it's also the full size. I didn't forget about the gliding as a model sport. <clears throat> so in that that year also I implemented. Um, and finished the core back channel. Uh, approved a bit Yeti back channel. Now I implemented also the Graupner hot. It's also now working the back channel telemetry, which can be used for uh, GPS triangle flying. I think that might help for some light class gliders uh, and maybe not contest, but for uh, GPS triangle league competitions. A uh, few. Bug fixes were fixed, and quite a lot of features are now coming into the into the Albatross with next release. Uh, and also, what you could already see a bit a sneak peek of the future: some kind of cloud-based system is coming, and live tracking uh, for also for flight analyze which I think will make the GPS triangle flying quite interesting also for others, not only the pilots who are there, but also for the suspectors worldwide uh, looking what's going on at the moment. So that's coming uh, now. 
uh, in the next updates and also the new product is coming, which will be called uh, Swift. That's basically the device more or less uh, adopted for the sport class as mm -hmm. the feedback was that Sparrow uh, is suffering a bit on the high G pulls on the speed round. It's quite um, behind. So the, the, the refresh of the position is not there. Unfortunately, we have to use what is on the market, the GPS, <clears throat> which is on the market is basically maybe for the car, which is not doing the 10G turn. Uh, so this the, the Swift will have this sorted out. Mm, so it's coming in April, I would say. Uh, and the Albatross will have nice features which is on a waiting list uh, from many wishes of the pilots. So more pilots I have, more wishes I get. Some of the wishes, <clears throat> uh, I already explained them that maybe will not work or maybe it should be used differently. So these pilots are then convinced uh, to use what is already done. And some wishes are very, well placed and I will implement them because they will only bring more for the others. What would you do if you look at the day today? Uh, would you update your systems uh, with the latest version you have on the web page yet or would you wait or what would you do status today? Well, at the end, unofficially, still saying <clears throat> we are in contact with the GPS group committee. And the idea of the 2021 is that on all competitions will be required the minimum version, uh, basically, which will be now released. It's under testing now <clears throat> because we need to have all the pilots on the same version, especially because of the hopping system. Okay. Some older systems were not doing correctly and they're then making interference for the others. So <clears throat> I would update everything also in the Albatross in the latest version, you will also get a notification that there is a new version. Okay. So you know that if you are not uh, getting the emails or checking the website, <clears throat> you will get a notification from the Albatross. So yeah, update it. And for now, maybe this is a good channel also to tell at the date today the Android 11 which is now already on the market Albatross is not supported to work on the Android 11 because Google did some policy changes on the file permissions okay. so that will need again a big reconstruction of the code because when they change something you have to follow otherwise you're not compatible with the latest version so anybody who is trying to buy something new tablet or phone buy it with the android 10. android 10 is working android 11 it will not work correctly you have any device you recommend at the moment you would <coughs> i always recommend that umi digi phone china produced okay Super cheap 130 euro big battery 6100 million okay. but unfortunately they are sold out so <laughs> at this moment it's hard to get uh, i bought it two three months ago but if i check it today it's out of stock and this company is now producing the new model which is basically same price but the battery it's four thousand okay million. it's only the battery uh, issue but we need to have the biggest battery to have the the long uh, the longer flying time so you don't need to recharge every time you land uh, for the tablet i would say whatever it's the latest android 9 or 10 because albatross is now also running very stable with all options enabled also on android 7 or 6 or 5 so it doesn't matter at the end, so we fix that issue with low performance CPU on the uh, RAM. Okay. Oh, that's that great. Be, yeah, so I, I'm really expecting now that also the, the feedback 
<coughs> of the all pilots now when the albatross 2.0 was released all working no more crashes stable so i'm looking forward for the 21 season 21 kind of all do right <laughs> i think i think i will go and do first laps tomorrow with the light class okay okay the weather here it's getting there <laughs> i think here also we have kind of the first good weekend coming up now uh, with some sunshine yeah. that's very great so let's take the opportunity as we have quite some countries if anybody would like to ask a question at andrew as we are live that would be great you can also put it into the chat box if you want to otherwise we wrap it up any nice stories you have to tell us Nobody. Oh, even better. Doesn't matter. <laughs> so what's your plan for 2021 then, Andre? 2021, you don't see it. I have the, the, oh, yeah. the calendar over there. <laughs> uh, for sure, the world, like a sport plus, uh, that's the one. So I will be there. I will be in Vipava Challenge Cup. And we power a light class contest, which is basically the extension of the Challenge Cup. And again, we power a scale class <clears throat> because it's near me. And I would like to go one more contest uh, in, in nearby somewhere in Germany. Okay. Uh, I was hoping to go to USA. Not just you. <laughs> But now the new president's still not allowing us to get there. So I just got a refund for the air ticket from last year. <laughs> so uh, I have money to spend for a new plane ticket, but I don't know if we will be allowed to co do to Corona. If I would need a vaccine taken before I can travel, I'm still young. So I get this shot in the autumn, I guess I will be on the line if I take. So I don't know. That was I mean, my week. To the USA. I mean, that's yeah, all we can do. I mean, I'm yeah. really looking forward to go there to fly with the guys. I bought this plane, which is behind in the box, Quintus, yes. just because to travel to USA. I even have the box downstairs to fly yeah. to. <laughs> yeah, I also have the box. I ordered everything. <laughs> But okay, <laughs> at least okay. Uh, at least we have plans. So planning is good. Realizing the plans is even better because I know every time I came anywhere I came, it was such a nice people. Yeah. So it was always super fun, and I really don't think that this competition it's like it's not like others, which everybody is hiding the tactics. <laughs> <clears throat> not telling anything here everybody tells you everything what you need because at the end i don't think that somebody who will just come first year and and he will win he will not it's you need some some years some triangles i guess especially jumping into the game at at those days now um it's a long way <laughs> it, it, yeah, but you know, at least uh, what is good in my experience is that the community is growing and there will be competitions which I personally think should be that the good pilots come there to support them, not to compete against them, but to be there to give them advice, to be as a local academy mm -hmm. because then they will compete between each other and all of them can win. Because if somebody of us came, then it's like they're here and we're here, you know, it's, <laughs> it's not fair, but that's the way it is. But eventually they came there also, you know. But, you know, especially I think what's the cool thing about this class is even you're on sixth, seventh position, 15th or 16th, you always kind of find your competition yeah. with another guy, which is really yeah. cool. I mean, yeah. You know how it is. Like in Formula One, you get overlapped. Imagine if you get overlapped, you could feel it in the GPS. You don't know if if Andre just fly, uh, flew past no. or somebody else. Yeah. So 
Yeah, maybe he has one more, maybe he has two less. I, you don't know when he started, you know, that's, that's the tricky part that even if everybody starts at the same time, only after you land or your time is out, starting speeding up, then you say, why are not these three guys speeding up? Yes. Yeah, well, because they restarted. Maybe after two laps, they restarted and get the better RMS and did one more. And this is where you can see that one decision of pressing a start button or using the switch on the transmitter can make huge difference. 300 points difference or 100 points difference. You know, that's, and you will not know until you land. That's it. Nothing we can do. Nothing we can do. So everybody who is playing other competitions, they all launch together, they all land together. You immediately know who is the winner. Okay. <laughs> not, okay. in, not in the GPS. In the GPS, until there are results, you don't know. That's actually one of the greatest things when you kind of, everybody landed. And then I remember we had this in Eglisau last year. And some guys, they had only three or four. And then some guys landed, they had, had seven and eight. And I think we had some guys with 12 and 13. And the guys with seven and eight were already celebrating. Yeah. <laughs> and then they were like, huh? <laughs> that was, yeah, that was also in, in Challenge Cup was like, you know, because there is no pressure, you don't also you don't uh, also force it. <clears throat> so in Spain, I was flying. It was all week. So after fourth day, uh, Stefan Holine was you know he was he's always trying to be in the top, flying okay. his Arcos all the time, and he was the first one, and he was super happy. And I said, Stefan, I really enjoy seeing you so happy but i'm sorry i didn't publish my flights from the four, four, four days so once i do it i know i will be like five laps more no he said no he just turned <laughs> back see okay come with new battery to go and fly <laughs> and even <sighs> it, was, it was in competition i think in the world when he did i think his first 15 laps. Okay. He landed and he was like screaming, Yes, my record. I did it. And it was all, only me flying. And I landed and he said, Andre, how much? How much? I did 15. 16. No. <laughs> 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 then you can really see. I wish I didn't do 16 at that time <laughs> because he was so. <laughs> Oh my God. That's pretty, yeah. But I, I know that after, I think next year he did 18, I think it was record. Okay, okay. Or 17, so he was improving also, yeah. <laughs> oh my God. So one oh, question we have. Uh, okay, I have a question. Are you going to do any of online competitions? That's for you. Yeah, I guess we are planning this. It depends now how long this uh, whole thing is going to take us until we can start to race again. But uh, probably we're going to make one in March just to kind of start with something. Let's see. I mean, it's hard to push to the pilots. We have to. I mean, I, 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 I know and I do hear if I talk to guys or deliver something that the people are also very hungry <laughs> to start to fly and, and to race again. And of course, it would be nice if we can if we can catch up again, or at least yeah, share some experiences. All right, cool. So thank you very much, Andre. Uh, we you. get you back into the R and D mode. Many uh, many cool features are coming up uh, shortly. I would say. Yeah. And then let's hope the season will start soon. And good luck, and catch you later. Yeah. I hope to see you soon. Hope to see you also in the high steep. Hope to see you in the power.